All right, so now we're gonna talk about protecting alcohol groups. So what the heck does that mean? So I think it's actually gonna be easier to just show you an example. Let's say that we have something like this compound here that has two functional groups going on, both the bromine and the alcohol. And we'd love to be able to create a Grignard reagent by adding magnesium in there. But what's gonna be the problem with this particular Grignard reagent? Well, neighboring molecules are just going to react with one another because you have this acidic proton here, right? So instead of creating this Grignard reagent, what you'll really do is this will react with itself And this proton that was on that alcohol group will just be moved over there, right? So these what would happen if you tried to create a Grign Grignard reagent is the alcohol groups in neighboring molecules would react with that Grignard group and thus you wouldn't get anywhere, right? So this is why we would have to add a protecting group. So what does that mean? So first of all, the idea of a protecting group is that we're gonna be able to add something that's going to convert our alcohol group to this protected group, which is unreactive. Then we can do whatever we want with the other half of the molecule, and in this case, maybe create a Grignard reagent. And then the other shtick about these protecting groups is we always have a way of deprotecting them. So then once we get our desired product on this half, we can go through this deprotecting state and get our alcohol group back. Okay, so this would be a way to uh, create a Grignard reagent with a molecule that already has an alcohol group without sort of ruining things um, because of that acidic proton. Okay, so that's what a protecting group is. So the specific protecting group that we use with uh, for alcohol groups, and this is something that we're going to see with a lot of functional groups. They have the methods of protecting and deprotecting. For alcohol groups, we go we use TMS or trimethylsilate. So basically, this sulf, uh, silicon atom is now playing this role, and it's created this really unreactive group. Boom. So again, you can think about this. This is just this this group here that's not going to move. It's not going to react with anything. So once we have our protected group, we can then add in magnesium and create a Grignard, All right? So, um, and then of course, important for any protecting group is that you have to have a method of deprotecting. Um, you can do so with acid. The, the really common one that people use in the lab is to add a fluoride ion and that will deprotect that TMS group. And that's almost always delivered with this tributyl ammonium fluoride or TBAF. Why do you have to use such a ridiculously largely substituted ammonium ion instead of like sodium fluoride? I honestly don't know. I'm sure there's a great reason, but I don't know what it is. But I do know that TBAF is what's almost always used to deprotonate or to deprotect a TMS protected alcohol group. All right, so then if I wanted to convert, you know, my goal is to convert this one into this molecule using Grignard. The first thing I'm going to do is add in my TMS chloride in the, and it's in this um, triethylamine solvent. This is just our solvent here. Now I have this protected group here. And then I can convert, I can add in magnesium, create my Grignard, add in my ketone, he had it, my Grignard to react with my ketone, follow that up with water in order to create that actual protonated group, right? Remember that what's my water doing here is it will protonate that alkoxide ion. And then I add in the TBAF in order to deprotonate, okay? So whether when you wanna use um, a Grignard is a good example. Uh, really, anytime you wanna use a really strong base, all right, so another example would be if I wanted to do an elimination type reaction with a molecule that had an alcohol group. Uh, normally we would be like, oh, I can just add in something like tert butoxide in order to get that elimination product. But really what would happen if I added in tert butoxide here? Well, I got that acidic proton to worry about there. So really what I would get in this case would be that deprotonated alcohol group and that, um, that halogen group would still remain, right? So that's not what's gonna do it for me. 
However, I can do an elimination selectively if I first protect that alcohol group, right? So what I do first is add in my TMS, whoops, TMS chloride along with um, the triethylamine solvent. Oops. I'll get this molecule here, which now has this protected alcohol group. Now I can add in tert butoxide in order to get my elimination product. And then I just have to deprotect with the TBAF. Okay, so it's all about when you want to use, um, you know, create, a, this is normally when you have mixed functional, or I guess always when you have mixed functional groups, but if you're going to add something that would react with the alcohol group, then you can first protect the alcohol group and thus prevent the, that unwanted reaction.